Hey, we're on page three of the June 2012 New York State Regents exam. Let's uh, start with question number 12. Question 12 deals with some pictures. A number of uh, one Newton f horizontal forces are exerted on a block on a frictionless horizontal surface. Which top view diagram shows the forces producing the greatest magnitude of acceleration? All right, so I got a block here on a frictionless surface. Now, us physics teachers have frictionless surface uh, in our back storage rooms. The problem is none of us have figured out how to pick it up to carry it out to show to you students. So they remain there, but they don't collect dust. So now we've got a frictionless surface. We put a block on it and we apply forces. Which one of these will produce the greatest acceleration? So we want the greatest net force. Well, let's look at these. A 10 going at one angle, a 10 going at another. We're going to have something greater than 10 pulling it that way. So it's uh, greater than 10. We've got a 10, or I'm sorry, did I say 10? That should have been a 1. Greater than 1. Here we've got a 1 going up and a 1 going down. They will cancel each other. So we've got a 1 going sideways. Here you've got just the 1 going up and 1 going down. They'll cancel. Here you've got a 1 going in every direction. They're going to cancel each other. This is uh, the greatest net force, greater than 1 Newton, and so it'll produce the greatest acceleration. Question 13, on a small planet, an astronaut uses a vertical force of a vertical, that's up and down, 175 Newtons, to lift a 87.5-kilogram uh, boulder. Mass is 87.5 kilograms. Uh, at a constant velocity to a height of 0 0.350 meters. Uh, height... 0.350 meters. Uh, what's the magnitude of the gravitational field strength on the surface of this planet? And we're looking for newtons per kilogram. Well, I tell you what, I'm not even going to look up a formula. I'm going to use the units. See how it's newtons per kilogram for units? What's the only combination I can get is to take 175 newtons divided by the 87.5 kilograms. And of the values given to me, it's newtons per kilogram. It's got to be that. Now, if I found my formula, I could find the formula. The gravitational field strength is, in fact, the force divided by the mass. But even without a formula sheet, I can just look at the units of my answer. They're all the same, so I've got to get the same way. So it's going to be 87, or 175 divided by 87. So my answer's got to be like 2-something. And uh, you know what? I'm going with this. I haven't even pulled out a calculator. Question 14. A car uses its brakes to stop on a level road. We got a car, a perfect graphical representation of a Zion, uh, stops on a level road. During this process, there must be a conversion of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, well, it's on a level road, so it's not going to be potential energy. We really hope it's not nuclear energy. Uh, it used to be a heat, but now we just throw it into the category of internal energy. The individual molecules and the brake pads are getting hotter. That's why they're made of a special material. If you've got racing cars, you have a special braking system um, because that uh, kinetic energy is turned into heat, internal energy. Question 15, which change decreases the resistance? or well, the total resistance to go down of a piece of copper wire. Well, in my electricity equations, I've got this one. Resistance is equal to rho L over A. Resistance equals rho L over A. Uh, this is the Greek letter rho. It stands for, in this equation, the resistivity of the material. But because they're all copper wire, that's going to be the same for all of them. So what makes this number go down? Well, a shorter length or a fatter wire. Let's go see if we can't find one of those choices. Increasing the wire's length. No, I have an increase of resistance. Decreasing the wire's resistivity. Increasing the wire's resistivity. Well, even if you could do that, that would increase the resistance. Decreasing the wire's temperature. That's the correct answer. Yikes, how do they get temperature into here? I mean, it's true. Temperature is a function of resistance. That's why uh, 
how you put cooling fans on your computer to keep it cool. The hotter it is, the more resistance. Well, that's not on the formula chain. Or decreasing the wire's diameter. You make a smaller wire, no, that's going to increase resistance. So I guess process of elimination, the correct answer has got to be three, regardless of whether you were taught the different characteristics uh, outside of uh, this equation. But uh, yeah, you put a wire, put it in liquid nitrogen, uh, lowers the resistance. Question 16. A stone on the end of a string is whirled clockwise at a constant speed in a horizontal circuit shown in the diagram below. So let's see. It's whirled clockwise at a constant speed in a horizontal circle, which means um, you're, you're doing this over your head. The circle is horizontal. The only way you could do it is if you had your hand up here and uh, it was over your head. This, as it turns out, could be a dangerous thing. Uh, we used to actually do a lab like this where we whirled stuff over our head. Um, but as it turns out, people's lab partners kept uh, smacking themselves with it. So anyway, you're whirling this over your head. They wouldn't let you do this in a school. I don't even know why this is a, a problem. They, they would never let you take a rock and whirl it over your head. It's horrible. Let's see what they want to know. Which pair of arrows best represents the direction of the stone's velocity and acceleration. I'm going to go do this. The velocity is this way. It's perpendicular. And the acceleration is this way. It's towards the center. It's called centripetal acceleration. Centripetal means center seeking. So if you're whirling a stone, uh, you've got to be constantly pulling inwards on that uh, rope to keep it going in a circle. And if you let go, wing, it's going off and it's going to hit your lab partner. And it's going to be going uh, tangential to the circle. So uh, those are the two we're looking for. So let's see if we can't find them. Here we go. Velocity down, acceleration inwards. Option four. It's always great to know what the answer is and then to go find it. Question 17. How much work is done by the force lifting by the force, the force? <laughs> I said this picture of the Star Wars. Trust the force, Luke. How much uh, work is done by the force lifting a 0.1 kilogram hamburger? So here's a mass of 0.1 kilograms. Vertically upwards at a constant velocity of 0.3 meters. A constant velocity. Okay, so it lists at a distance 0.3 meters at a constant velocity. All right, well, we're looking for work. So work is equal to force times distance. All right. If you are lifting something, the force you have to overcome is the force of gravity, so that's mg. And distance is still there. So work is equal to um, mgd. So one kilogram times, let's say, 10 meters per second squared is 1, and 0.3, let's say you do uh, 0.3 joules. Question 18. Two electrons are separated by a distance of 3 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. What are the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force each exerts on the other? Let's do direction first. Uh, separated by distance. Two electrons. So the force is going to be repulsive, away from each other, away from each other. All right. Well, now the equations, uh, it's, it can't be helped. Here's the equation. Force between charges is equal to kqq over r squared. So force is equal to k q1 q2 divided by the distance separating the center squared. K, as it turns out, is uh, the electrostatic constant. Electrostatic constant's over here. K is in the middle, and uh, it is in the middle somewhere right there. And it's uh, 8.99 times 10 to the 9. 8.99 times 10 to the 9. The charge of an electron. Elementary charge, charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Q equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. 
separated by 3, 3 squared. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to multiply the first numbers. 8.99, say 8.99 times 1.6 times 1.6, 23, divided by 9, I'm getting 2.55. So what could have been a very complicated problem using a lot of scientific notation, because it's multiple choice, which makes it easier, um, you can just get away with it. Now this is 2.56 as well. You would have to go through and work out with the exponents. But um, there's a trick I just shared with you. Don't tell your teacher. Enjoy.